the operation aid, the small hydro power plants in this country. We also want to go for these uh, wind power uh, uh, projects, uh, both in uh, Georgia, but also in neighboring countries. And there is a site uh, which actually has been uh, uh, investigated uh, for quite a long time now, over four years. And the uh, prospects of uh, putting uh, wind turbines there are pretty good. Uh, we, uh, however, wish uh, that there is more uh, clarity and predictability also in terms of price for those projects. There is one project which has been developed and by the uh, actually government, by the Georgian Energy Development Fund, so far, uh, earlier this year, 20 megawatt wind uh, farm nearby uh, was taken into operation. Uh, um, there are some uh, terms that have been fixed in the PBA. And we wish uh, similar terms could be, could be also obtained uh, by private uh, sector uh, uh, operators. Now, uh, a few words more about the Scalabani uh, coal fired power plant project. Uh, again, the uh, technical details which uh, I don't want to bother you too much about. We have uh, secured a PPA with the government. Uh, and uh, 150 megawatt will be uh, taken uh, by ESCO on an annual basis starting from the end of 2020, by which time this plant should be in, in, in operation and the annual uh, 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 generation output will be uh, sold on a fixed price to the energy system. Three conditions are very good. Uh, we have uh, actually taken measurements for a period of uh, now more than four years. And there is a capacity factor which is actually a basic characteristic for the uh, potential uh, 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 profitability of such a site. Capacity factor of more than 40%, which is very high by international standards. Now, of course, uh, a capacity factor on its own is not enough in order to judge on the, on the prospects of a, of a project. But combined with, with a tariff, uh, this uh, already gives you an orientation. Now, uh, what is missing here in Georgia is the clarity and, uh, on, 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 on the terms under which renewable energy will be developed. Currently, all those deals are subject to negotiation with the government. And there is no clear objective, uh, uh, let's say, reference uh, price uh, according to which uh, project may be developed. In other countries, there are two uh, models actually that exist. One model is like in Germany, you've got the legislation that sets the feet in tariffs for renewable energy developers. The second is to separate from the energy market a small part of the market which is under, uh, uh, under, uh, uh, under, undergoes a spe specific regulation. So usually there's an auction system within which uh, then the new projects are being auctioned and the best uh, will take it. So you are guaranteed a certain uh, percentage in the overall market. So there are two systems. The Georgia, we don't have a system. Neither the one nor the other. So we need the company has uh, plans to uh, grow further and we invest about $15 million or so yearly. Uh, to date, the investment of the Georgian American Alloys Group uh, is about $60 million and uh, the, ultimate benefit, the ultimate beneficiaries of the company are investing over $100 million, $150 million since 2007. Um, one of the biggest investment projects that we have brewing, and it's been there for, for quite some time now, is the construction of a uh, new beneficiation plant, uh, the processing of uh, raw ore. Unfortunately, Georgian, for those who are not familiar, unfortunately, Georgian ore is not very rich, so it needs a lot of enrichment. And this is what the beneficiation uh, really involves. Um, the, it's about, it's over 50 million dollars worth of investment in, in today's exchange rate and uh, 
not only is it good in terms of spending dollars in the region, but it also tremendously helps the environment. I have personally spent countless hours negotiating first with the uh, producer of the state of the art technology uh, to come up with the, uh, the design and deal for a boat. And then tremendous amount of time between two largest banks uh, for financing this project. Uh, unfortunately, uh, due to bureaucracy, the project has not moved forward. Uh, we have over a year and a half. We have been trying to get the construction permit and uh, it has been to red tape, it hasn't happened yet. And hopefully sooner than later it will move forward and we'll get that done. Uh, today in Tbilisi we have 243 hotels that accounts to almost 6,000 room sets, which 13,000 beds. And if you look at the distribution of international upscale and local upscale, and international mid scale. Mostly today, the supply is uh, by local brands, but that's going to change very soon. As we have 21 hotels being built right now, there's 3,000 rooms, and most of them are all international. Uh, some performance indicators, which are probably very interesting for the investors. International brands are doing very well, and their ADR is in the range of 180, 177. That's very good performance if you look at the hotel industry worldwide. Both the local brands are doing uh, less, and then we see a slight decrease in 2015. We think that accounts mostly to the large evaluation that we had. The competency rates, again, very strong market. 68% for international upscale brands and uh, mid scale brands as well, on the same level more or less. It's again very good performance. A few words about the uh, residential market, of course, that's kind of more interesting for the uh, local investors and developers, as the residential market is always more local than other sectors of the real estate. Here we have uh, experienced a 3% drop in number of transactions. But what we also see on the market is that the portion of the new developments are increasing in the total of transactions. So that means that uh, 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 secondary market is doing worse than the primary market. So developers are selling more than uh, flats and apartments are uh, bought in the secondary market. Uh, this is uh, 2016. Here we have a good news. We have quite a significant increase. It's more than 6%. I think that mostly accounts for the fact that in 2015 we had a significant, not significant, but quite a big drop, now it's coming up again. So that's a very good sign for the developers and of course for the investors who are doing their investments in the residential market. That's, uh, that's a number about the, the volume of the transaction. So if you look at the volume of the transaction, the previous slide were the number of transactions. We have a 23% decrease. That's, that means that the prices have dropped approximately by 20%. The same numbers for the, uh, for the uh, 2016. Here we have again increase, but it's not very different from the number of transactions. So this says that the prices are more or less stable, but we have increased the number of transactions. This is a distribution of the number of transactions in, in, in Tbilisi. So you can see that almost 25% of all transactions that's happening in Tbilisi are in South Tower, which is this is the most wanted development area today for the residential developers. There are more details, of course, but I'm not going to bother you with the numbers. Uh, this is a number of uh, supply in the market. So we have uh, projects under development. Almost 600 projects are now under development. Uh, that's uh, around 33,000 apartments. That's 3.4 million square meters. That's a lot for the market. So there is a quite uh, big uh, say supply in the market. Of course, that also plays into the uh, price and the competition and we've seen the drop in the price. And I think, of course, it will play uh, more uh, in the next year. Uh, 